This is Jonas from wishgel.com. In this video, we are going to learn about concurrent statements in wishgel. When we have been assigning to signals in previous tutorials, we have always done it within a process. But what happens if we try to assign to a signal outside of a process? Let's find out. I'm gonna copy the code from the previous tutorial into a new file. I'll save it as t13 for tutorial number 13 underscore concurrent prox tb.vhd. Remember to change the entity and architecture names as well. Then I will erase all of these signals so that we are left with only one process containing a wait for 10 nanosecond statement. This will be the starting point of this tutorial. First, let's declare a new 6-bit unsigned signal. We will give it an initial value of all zeros. In our process, before the wait statement, we will assign to our new signal its value plus 1. This process will cause our counter signal to be incremented by 1 every 10 nanoseconds. Then, let's create another unsigned signal, this one 8 bits wide, which is 2 more than the other signal we just created. Just so that we have something to work with, I'm going to show you a clever way to multiply by powers of 2 in VSGL. We're gonna create a process with logic that multiplies the value of the 6-bit unsigned signal by 4. Inside of the new process, I'll assign to the 8-bit signal, mul1, the value of the 6-bit signal. Of course, we can't assign a 6-bit value directly to an 8-bit signal, that will cause a compilation error because the vectors don't match. What I can do is to add a couple of zero bits as padding. I'm using the ampersand symbol for concatenating the 6-bit vector and the zero bits to form an 8-bit value. At the end of our new process, I'll add a wait on statement. The program will wait here until the 6-bit signal changes. When this happens, it will wake up and the mul1 signal will be assigned with the quadruple value of the 6-bit signal. Let's have a look at these signals in the waveform. We can see that the 6-bit signal is counting upwards. When the unsigned signal is 1, the mul1 signal is 4. When uns is 2, mul1 is 8. When uns is 3, mul1 is hex c, which is 12 in decimal. Mul1 always has the quadruple value of uns. So how does this multiplication magic really work? We've used a technique called bit shifting. Consider this 5-bit signal which has the value 1. If we concatenate two zeros to the right of it, we suddenly have the binary number 100, which is 4 in decimal value. Shifting zeros in from the right is basically multiplying the number with its base. 2 is the base of binary numbers, so every time we shift in a zero, the original number is multiplied by 2. The advantage of using this method is that it doesn't really consume any resources at all. It's just a rewiring of the circuit. Alright, I'm creating a duplicate 8-bit signal and I'll just really quickly create another equivalent process using a sensitivity list. Do you remember when we learned about sensitivity lists back in tutorial number 9? We learned that a process with a sensitivity list is equivalent to a process with a wait on statement at the end. These two processes are functionally equal. Let's verify this in the waveform. And the two signals are equal, of course. And now to the start of this video. We're going to create a process using a concurrent statement. For this, I'll create another 8-bit signal which I will call mul3. Then I'll copy this line and paste it before the end architecture tag. We need to change mul2 to mul3, the name of our new signal. And that's it. We have now created a process using a concurrent statement. A concurrent process is simply an assignment to a signal within the architecture part of the VHDL file, but outside of a process. Let's check the waveform. And we see that all three signals are indeed behaving equally. It's important to understand that a signal assignment outside of a process is actually a process of its own. What the compiler does is to treat it as a process that is sensitive to all the signals to the right of the assignment operator, which is of course the same as a process containing a wait on statement at the end of it. You have now learned three different ways to create the same process, and you may be wondering, which one should you use? There's no correct answer to that question. I would just say, use whatever notation you feel creates the most readable code. Your colleagues will thank you for that. You will thank yourself for that when you try to understand the code you created a few months or years ago. That being said, many people will tell you to use processes with wait statements only in test bench code, and not in production modules. This is just a convention, but I would advise you to follow it. It makes the code more readable. When you look at how the code is written, you immediately know if it was meant for production or for test. That's all I had for you in this video about concurrent statements. Check out vhglwiz.com for more tutorials and blog posts.